Hi, I'm Spiders, a top 350 debugging player, and every build needs to use at least one of the four sidearm options. If you want to find out why that is and which works best for you, then keep watching. To begin with, most of you will probably already know this, but just to make sure we're on the same track, let me quickly explain what weapon stances. All weapons can either have one-handed or two-handed stances, which can be changed by pressing Y. Light weapons are locked into one-handed stances, medium weapons can switch between one or two-handed, and heavy are locked into two-handed stances, but with a talent may switch between one and two-handed stances. This is important to know, as all sidearms may only be actively used with one-handed stances. Going into the first sidearm, we have the classic shield. Shields give you a flat posture bonus varying on the quality of the shield, with the worst shield at 10 fortitude requirement giving 4 posture, and the best shield at 75 fortitude requirement giving 10 posture. However, shields have the critical downside of giving you 40% less posture back on parry, which is what makes shields not just a straight up benefit. Because of this, I only recommend using shields on builds that can reliably regain posture back, without solely relying on parrying. There are a variety of talents that can help with this, but one significant one that I like to mention is critical attack. If you have a weapon with a crit that you can reliably use without being punished, you can easily proc critical attack and regain posture. So using a weapon type that fits into this category could enable you to use shields. However, even then, after the shield nerfs, it's hard to say that it's worth it to actively use shields for posture now, so keep that in mind. Besides that, shields have a variety of talents as well, most noteworthy being the shield master talents, which are Knight's Rally and Turtle Shell. Knight's Rally is quite strong for escaping combos while actively using a shield, simply by holding F while in a combo. Turtle Shell, on the other hand, gives you spine cutter immunity, and also 25% less damage to the back when your shield is on your back. However, Turtle Shell has the downside of requiring you to have Knight's Rally as a prerequisite, which if you're using Turtle Shell, is just a wasted talent. One last thing about shields, if you meet the requirement for a shield pre-shrine and then don't post-shrine, you can equip the shield pre-shrine and still be able to use it post-shrine as long as you never equip it. No matter what choice you make, using a shield will always have some sort of downside, whether it's less posture damage replenished on parry, or the cost of talents, so it's up to you whether or not it's worth using it. The next sidearm option we have is side weapon guns. Side guns can be used as a pretty free ranged option, since you can use the zero requirement advanced starter weapon known as the Silver Six on any build that supports one-handing weapons. Even better, if you're using a light weapon, you can get bonus light weapon damage scaling from guns as well. The downside to guns, however, is that when using a side gun without a gun as your main weapon, your side gun will have reduced damage, and it will also match the speed of your main weapon, which is usually slower. However, less damage and swing speed on your side gun is still better than no side gun at all. Another downside to side guns is that you do need to buy bullets to use them effectively, so if that's a significant bother to you, keep that in mind. Past that, there are some bullet talents that affect side gun as well. In my opinion, it's not usually worth it to run these talents, since you don't really gain enough with the cost of sacrificing talent slots. However, as always, it's up to you. Overall though, I'd say side guns are a pretty solid choice. As long as you don't mind buying bullets, there's only really benefits using a side gun, even if it's the zero requirement silver six. So for sure consider this sidearm. The last sidearm that I'll be covering is pairing daggers. Currently, there are only two pairing daggers, first being the base pairing dagger, which requires 10 agility, and the Kyra Steer, which is an upgraded version that requires 40 agility. The wiki states that you get more posture damage dealt on parry, more posture restored on parry, and less posture damage received on parried. However, from my testing, only the more posture restored on parry seems to be true. This is a pretty small benefit, but if you don't want to use a shield or side gun, feel free to get parrying dagger a shot. The last option I'd like to mention is no sidearm, and just going two-handed stance instead. Using a two-handed stance simply increases your weapon's posture damage dealt, with as far as I can tell, no other benefit. This can sort of be considered an offensive version of the parrying dagger. Instead of the defensive benefit of more posture replenished on parry from parrying daggers, you get more posture damage on hit. If you don't plan on using the other options, then this is really your only reasonable choice left, since it's just directly better than going one-handed stance. Unless for whatever reason you don't want to do directly more posture damage. From all of this, the key takeaway is that you should always be using at least one of the options mentioned in this video. Either using a shield, side gun, parrying dagger, or two-handed stance. For the mentioned options themselves though, the best option for you depends significantly on your preferences and build, since each provides a unique benefit that isn't directly superior to another. Like and subscribe for more top PvP content, and I'll see you in the next one.